Hello, today's lesson is the second lesson about greatest common factor. And basically what I'm trying to show you is that you can use this idea of making groups and the greatest common factor for real life problems. So notice there's a pinata and you have a bunch of things that you're gonna be putting in the pinata, right? So here's your list of what you have. And you don't wanna go out the store and get more, but you wanna see how many um, pinatas you can fill with the supplies that you already have. And so it asks for what's the greatest number of pinatas you can make. But what you're doing is you're putting in a combination of nail polish, earrings, and lollipops, right? So I could think about it as I'm trying to figure out how many different groups I can make with 18 nail polish bottles, with 24 pair of earrings, or with 42 lollipops separately. But then I could think about, well, what if I am trying to make equal groups of all three at the same time? So I can really use the, um, the idea of the factor ladder. So I'm gonna make a little factor ladder with my nail polish and my earrings and my lollipops as the numbers in my, um, in my ladder. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and write in, I have 18 bottles of polish, 24 pairs of earrings and 42 lollipops. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my factor ladder there. And I don't wanna have any of these um, leftovers, right? So I'm just going to put 2357 as the first four prime numbers. And if they're all even numbers, I can divide by two. So now I've got two groups, right? I can make two pinatas and I can fill them with nine nail polish bottles, 12 pairs of earrings, and 21 lollipops. But that's only two pinatas. So now I'm going to see if there's another common factor that I can divide by, which turns out is three and I get three, four, and seven. And now I've got some um, uh, like uncommon factors, right? These are the common factors. These are the uncommon factors. When I multiply the two greatest common factors together, I get six. So the idea is in this problem, I'm really trying to find the greatest common factor. What's the biggest number of groups I can make where I have equal things? Okay, so now here's what's really cool. At the bottom of my, of my chart, these aren't the leftovers. This actually tells me how many of each are going to go inside, right? It's so cool. So I've got three bottles of polish. Well, times six is 18. Oh, that totally makes sense. Four pairs of earrings times six is 24 and seven lollipops times six is 42. So this actually tells me what each pinata will have, right? So I'm gonna just put up here, there's gonna be three bottles of nail polish, four pairs of earrings, and seven lollipops in each. All right, let's look at another example. Okay, so again, here is an example where it says you've got 126 pieces of chocolate candy, you've got 60 pieces of hard candy, and you're gonna be putting them into gift bags, right? So this one says, use a factor ladder to determine the maximum, right? I wanna make the most number of gift bags that I can. So I'm gonna say, okay, so I've got chocolate, I've got hard candy, and I'm gonna put them in a, oops, do, 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 put it in a factor ladder. This is 126 pieces, this is 60 pieces. Okay, they're both even. I know how to make two groups. When I do that, there would be 63 chocolate and there would be 30 hard candy. And now these are both divisible by three. So I divide out a three and I get 21 hard candies, I mean chocolate and 10 hard candies. 21 and 10 have no more common factors. I multiply the two times the three. The greatest common factor is six. And then here's that question of what's in each gift bag. Well, the cool part is it's down at the bottom. In each gift bag, it looks like this, right? So here's my gift bag. I've got 21 chocolate candies and I have 10 hard candies. And then what I have is six of them. Oops, I don't have enough room to draw my gift bag. One, two, three, four, five, six gift bags. So this is in each of those gift bags. All right. Now I want to um, show you some examples of some always, sometimes, never questions. These questions are so good because they make you really think, do you understand the idea of what a greatest common factor is? Okay, so here's the first one, right? The greatest common factor of two even numbers is two. 
So here's what I do. I try to debunk it. I try to get something that never works or something that always works. And if it's one, if, 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 if I find one that's true, and then I also find a, an, an example that's false, then I know it sometimes. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just come up with some now. I'm going to think about what this means. The greatest common factor of two even numbers is two. So it's like this. If this is the greatest common factor, and I do a factor ladder, uh, let's see. If I do um, two and four, two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. Okay, so I picked two even numbers, and the greatest common factor is two. That is totally true, right? But now I'm going to say, well, what? I pick the smallest, I picked a prime number to start with. What if I pick two even numbers that are bigger? Like let's say I pick 10 and 20 and I'm gonna do a factor ladder and divide by two and I get five and 10 and now I'm gonna divide by five and I get one and I get two. I use two even numbers, but this time the greatest common factor is 10. So two even numbers, I got two, that was true. Two even numbers that I started with, I got 10, that's false. So now I know this is sometimes true. Okay, so what I do is I just come up with examples and see, um, see if I can come up with one that's true and one that's false and it would be sometimes. For the true one, I'll do two or three examples and then look for a pattern. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase that. Okay, the second one, the greatest common factor of two prime numbers is one. That's interesting. So here's what I'm going to do. A couple examples. I'm going to put two prime numbers in a factor ladder and try to find a common divisor. Oops, there is none. Okay, I'm going to do another. Let's do three and five. What can I divide by? Well, three is divisible by three and five is only divisible by five. Uh-oh, how about if I try five and 11? Right, so it turns out that every time I have two prime numbers, the only thing they're going to have in common is one. So this is going to be always true. And that makes sense, right? Because one is a factor of every single number. So this was sometimes, the second one was always. All right, let's look at the third example. When one number is a multiple of another, the greatest common factor of the numbers is the greater of the numbers. Ooh, what does that even mean? Okay, one number is a multiple of another. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the number three. Oops, and I have to make it. Okay, so now this is the one number. So here's my one number, six. That's a multiple of three, right? Because if I do three times two, I get six. The greatest common factor of the numbers is the greater of the numbers. Okay, well, I'm going to put three and six in the factor ladder. They're both divisible by three. I get one and two. So the greatest common factor is three. Oops, which is the smaller number. Okay, let me try one more example and see if I can, um, let's see, let's do, how about, oh, the 10 and 20 that I used on that other even example. Okay, I'm gonna divide by two and I get five and 10. I'm gonna divide by five and I get one and, oops, two. So the greatest common factor is 10, which is the smaller number, not the greater number. So I can see what's gonna happen each time. If you have a multiple, the greatest common factor is always going to be the smallest, so this one would be never, never going to be true. Okay, another example. Okay, so here we go. We've got some balloons, and I've got 16 white balloons and 24 red. So here's the idea. Again, what's the greatest number of arrangements? You should be thinking greatest arrangements. It looks like I'm making groups, so we could find common factors. Now, I could totally just play with these, right? I could split these in half, um, so this was 16, so I could make eight, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then I could take half of the 24 and I could put 12, right? So now, right now, all I'm doing is cutting my red balloons in half and my white balloons in half. And so I need to leave 12 here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, here's what I did. I made two groups. There's eight balloons in the white and there's 12 in the red. But wait a minute, I could keep playing with these different combinations. Maybe I could make three groups. Ooh, no, 16 isn't divisible by three. Ooh, maybe I can make four groups. So now I can cut the 16 balloons, right, into groups of four. 
So as I play around with these different groups, one, two, oops, three, four, right? So here we go. Hmm. I can make four groups. And then if I take the 24 and divide by four, oh, there's six. So I put four whites together with six red. So do I really want to keep arranging them like this? Or does it make sense to just put both numbers in a factor ladder and do this? I've got my 16. I've got my 24. I'm going to call this white balloons. I'm going to call this red balloons. And I'm going to divide by common factors until I have no more common factors. I get four and six. Ooh, this is cool. I'm dividing by two every time because they're even numbers. Okay, so now the greatest common factor is two times two is four times two is eight. So I can make eight arrangements. And then the cool part is the number of balloons in each arrangement is down here. There's going to be two white and there's going to be three red. Three red and two white balloons in each of my eight arrangements. Okay, last thing I want to show you is this. So sometimes in the textbook, they give these weird problems. It says different words, same question. Which is different? Find both answers. Okay, so that sounds a little bit weird, but I'm going to show you what it means. When I look at this problem, it says, what's the greatest common factor of 24 and 32? Okay, well, I'm just going to make my, um, uh, make my uh, factor ladder, and I'm going to divide. And I'm going to actually do the math, right? I want to figure out what is the greatest common factor. And then I divide by 2 again, and I get 3 and 4. So when I do this multiplication, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. The greatest common factor is 8. Now I'm going to read the second question. What's the greatest common divisor? Oh, guess what? A factor is the same thing as a divisor. Okay, it's 8. What's the greatest prime factor? Ooh, I'm going to look at the prime factors. There's a 2. There's a 2. There's a 2. Okay, so the prime factors are 2, right? Those are the common factors. So the greatest prime factor is 2, but when I multiply them all together, I get the greatest common factor. Okay, that's cool. The last one, what's the product of the common prime factors? So the common prime factors are 2 times 2 times 2, ooh, which is 8. Okay, so which one is different? Right, so it's this one. And then I answered the which one is different. I circled it. And then what's the answer to the different question, which is two. So that's what they mean by find both answers. Find which one is different and then answer that question. And I did while I was doing my work. So this one is different. Okay, that's all.